And Neve Barker joins us now live from London. Neve, uh, it's not exactly a surprise that Penny Morden would be one of the candidates here. However, she's not going to be a household name for our international audience. Tell us more about her. No, she's not particularly well known beyond the United Kingdom, but she is somebody who has thrown her hat into the ring when it comes to leadership contests uh, in the past because she came third in the summer contest that, of course, led to Liz Truss becoming uh, prime minister. Uh, she is the leader of the House in the Trust government, or former Trust government. Uh, she formerly served as Defence Secretary under Boris Johnson. She's occupied all sorts of ministerial posts. And to some, she's regarded as being less of a divisive figure than the likes of Boris Johnson, who hasn't officially declared that he intends to run, but is apparently mm. um, excited by the prospect. Or indeed Rishi Sunak, the former Chancellor, who many believe stabbed Boris Johnson both in the front and the back to oust him from office. So in that sense, uh, Penny Mordaunt uh, could well be that unity candidate that the Conservative Party are, are pushing for. But if the odds are anything to be believed so far, she's currently third in, in the running. Although, as I say, both Sunak and Boris Johnson are yet to officially mm. declare their intention to run. Yeah. So those are the three names our viewers need to remember. Rishi Sunak, Penny Mordaunt and, of course, Boris Johnson. How serious, Neve, is this Boris Johnson comeback scenario? I think we need to take it very, very seriously uh, indeed, uh, because, um, as I say, the, the bookies uh, very much see Boris Johnson's return as being a very real possibility. And we've been watching the financial markets dip significantly off the back of this news in the past couple of hours or so. The price of uh, government sovereign bond yields has rocketed, meaning the cost of government borrowing has gone up gone up on the back of uh, this news. And we believe also, according to Boris Johnson's father, Stanley Johnson, that uh, as soon as this leadership contest uh, surfaced, he immediately decided to hop on a plane back from the Caribbean, where he was on holiday, to... Uh, uh, push for his uh, return to the top job. And we are seeing, of course, prominent uh, figures within government, either formerly under his government or currently under Liz, the Liz Trust government, one after another, saying that they would back Boris Johnson to the leadership. He's seen very much as a man who can uh, secure the jobs of many Conservative Party MPs, largely because he's the man who led the Conservatives into a, ma uh, a big major victory back in the 2019 election that gave the Conservatives that 80-seat majority. So, in the eyes of many Conservatives, he's seen as having probably the most legitimacy out of all of the candidates when it comes to the nation's interpretation of who should be in charge. But, very lastly, if you look at the polls, at the tail end of his leadership, a YouGov poll suggested that as many as 68 per cent of the population believe Boris Johnson to have been mm. completely politically incompetent towards the end of his tenure, mired in controversy, and nobody beyond the Westminster bubble would like to see a return of that. Yeah, I don't know if you're Boris Johnson, if it's possible to overcome those kinds of odds. But if he's going to pull it off, he's got three days to do it. One, one more thing before we let you go, uh, Neve. The prospect of a general election, how likely is it? We know the Conservatives do not want one at all. No, well, the, the choreography of this is, is, is quite clear. Look, we've got a parliamentary system here in the UK. Constitutionally, um, the party with a sizable majority doesn't have to uh, push for or enter into a general election while they maintain that majority and while they can choose their own leader. So the next tabled election doesn't have to happen until the end of January 2025. So as long as the, the Conservative Party can have a leader in place, they can stay in power. That's what the Constitution says. But politically, this is looking incredibly dangerous uh, for the Conservative Party. They are riven by divisions. They're at odds with each other. And we've already heard from multiple Conservative MPs that if the likes of Boris Johnson got in power, that they would be prepared to resign. Uh, kick-starting by-elections. Others have said that they would even vote alongside the opposition parties, like the opposition Labour Party, to table a vote of no confidence in their own party in order to press a reset on British politics that, as you know, has been through all sorts of tumult and turbulence over the past year or two. All right, Neve Barker reporting live from Westminster. As I said, we've got three days to go until we know who the nominees are, the candidates who make it past that nomination threshold. Neve, thank you very much.